Hi everyone! Today's lesson we're gonna discuss about air temperature. But how hard it is to take the temperature of the Earth? The most obvious problem is that there are not a single temperature for the Earth, but an enormous number of local temperatures that expand from the range from frozen Antarctica to the tropical jungles and arid deserts of Africa. How this array of local temperatures combines to give a single measure of the planetary temperature is a difficult task to happen, so you have to look at this graphic and see what happened. That represents the temperature measure between 1880 to 2016. But remember, there's so many problems you have. For example, different instruments used by different observers. Differences in location with potential interferences, such as heat sources. Differences in high above the surface where the temperature are taken. And finally, differences when the readings are taken and recorded. For the complicated in this issue is there are many locations on the globe where there are no temperature measurements or where there have been only sporadic ones, such as over the oceans. So satellite measurements of atmospheric temperature beginning in 1979 have a help of coverage, particularly over the oceans. But the data are indirectly measured and require interpretation to convert the temperatures for comparison with data from direct thermometric instruments. So today's class learning goals are Define temperature and how it is measured Define temperature controls and global temperature patterns Explain human response to change in temperature and describe human urban heat island and global temperature increase. Let's talk about temperature. The atoms and molecules in the substance do not always travel at the same speed. This means that there is a range of energy, the energy of motion or kinetic energy, among the molecules. In a gas, for example, the molecules are traveling in random directions, a variety of speeds. Some are fast and some are slow. So the temperature is a measure of the heat or thermal energy in particular in a substance. Since it's average measurement, it does not depend on the number of the particles of the object. In that sense, it does not depend on the size of it. For example, the temperature of a small cup of boiling water is the same as the temperature of a large pot of boiling water. Even the large pot is much bigger than the cup and has millions and millions more water molecules. So, temperature. Special temperature scales. So, do we need to know if you should put a coat on before you go out? What to check if you can put the cooking in the oven? So, temperature scales provide a a way to quantify and measure how hot or cold a material is. There are four, three major scales that are used around the world. Fahrenheit and Celsius are frequently used to every day. So, but heat and temperature are not the same. So, why? Because heat is a form of energy that flows from one system to object to another one, due to the temperature difference. So, think about when you have a hot coffee, the coffee is sand or transfer energy from the air. So eventually, you hot coffee and the air, you're gonna have the same temperature. The same thing works with um, cold drinks. So in this case, the cold drink is gonna be absorb heat energy, for example, from the air. So temperature always refer to numbers. So you can measure them in 24 hours, so represents average representing the daily mean temperature. If you divide some all month daily temperature and divide by the number of the days, you have the monthly mean and finally the annual temperature. And the temp annual temperature range represents the difference between the warmest month minus the coldest month. So keep that in mind because you're gonna use. And pay attention to this picture where you see at the same day, at the same time, different surface represents different temperature. For example, the air temperature is 54 degrees Fahrenheit, but the asphalt is 66, the concrete 59, 
the shade concrete is 46, the grass is 40, and the sunlight the grass is 56. So each element absorb or react for the sun radiation based on the own characteristics. So I mentioned there are two common temperature scales, Celsius and Fahrenheit, and another one is Kelvin. We're going to talk later on about that. So the Fahrenheit scale is a temperature is a common form of temperature measure using United States and some parts of the Caribbean, as you can see in that map. And there is one country in Africa and some Iceland, but most of the, the world doesn't use Fahrenheit. That scale was created by the German scientist Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit in the early 18th century and adapted its measurement standards from a previous scale called by Oli Rummer. So, in Fahrenheit scales, water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212 degrees. The Fahrenheit temperature scales include negative temperatures below 0 degrees Fahrenheit. The coldest possible temperature, the call the absolute zero, is negative 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. Another one is the Celsius scale. So the Celsius is a little different because they divide most of them in 100 degrees. So outside the United States, most of the world use the Celsius scales to measure temperatures. So two versions of the Celsius scales were created in the early 18th century. One by the Swedish scientist Anders Celsius and another one by the French Jean-Pierre Christian. The Celsius scale is sometimes referred as the centigrade scale because it's based in 100 divisions between the freezing and boil points of water. So water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Because of how the boiling and freezing points are arranged, each degree of Fahrenheit is 1.8 times the size of degrees Celsius. Like Fahrenheit, Celsius include negative temperatures. In this case, absolute zero falls in negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. That thermometer you see in your left shows the original Celsius scale, the original Celsius thermometer, and one thing you're gonna notice is the number decrease. That means they're higher on the bottom, close the bulb, and the lower. So in the original scale, Celsius make the boil temperature zero and 100 for the freezing. So what happened is there is no temperature, negative temperature because there is no temperature higher, based on his experience, than the boil temperature. Another scale is the Kelvin. So the Kelvin scale was adapted from the Celsius scale in the 19th century by the British scientist William Thompson, later Lord Kelvin. The Kelvin scale was designed in order to set the zero point of the temperature scale at the absolute zero. Because of this, absolute zero is called a zero Kelvin, does not use degrees in this notation. You can convert Celsius to Kelvin by adding 273.15 to a Celsius temperature. In this case, water freezes at 273.15 and boils as 373.15 Kelvin. Because of this direct, direct relation to the absolute zero, Kelvin temper, temperature is widely used in scientific equations and calculations. 